welcome to the Building Thriving Lifestyles podcast. I'm your host, Eike Lodotir, and I love to help grow better humans by challenging myself and others. Today's episode, we had a chat with Salim al Marshuki. Salim is, like many of my other podcast guests, a dear friend, someone that I talk to on pretty much weekly, if not daily basis. And he is a such an inspiration to me. The reason why he inspires me is because he manages to have this like super busy life with five kids, a wife, side project, building project of his own house, work, big family man. And is just in general, like this person that I know and his friends know that we can always call him for help. We sat down with him for a chat about how he manages all these competing obligations in his life. And I do think that some of you busy parents out there might find this one a super interesting one. I hope you enjoy the chat. And here is Salim. Good morning, Salim. And thank you so much for joining me on the Thriving Lifestyles podcast. Good morning. Salam alaikum. <laughs> <laughs> Your signature uh, greeting from socials. Can you tell me, Salim, who are you and how would you explain yourself to a complete stranger? Okay, so I'm a young man from Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, not too young. A father of five boys. Mm -hmm. Husband of a Viking woman. Yeah, pretty fair. Outdoor lover. Mm -hmm. Very hyper, mm -hmm. can't sit still. I, I I will try to manage to sit still in this uh, conversation. And uh, I love all kinds of fitness. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And what do you do for work? Uh, I'm an engineer. I'm a civil engineer. Civil engineer. And do you work uh, in the UAE? Where do you? I work in charge of government mm -hmm. uh, in the roads. So basically building roads, bridges project managing those stuff. Got you, got you, got you. And what do you like to do when you're not working, sleeping and eating? When I'm not doing all of that, I'd like to spend time with my boys, with my family, <laughs> most pr preferably doing some activity, like going camping or going outdoor, walking, doing something active. I got you, got you. How old are your boys? So we'll start from the bottom. So, one and a half, mm -hmm. six, nine, twelve, and thirteen. Twelve and thirteen, got you. So there is a, a busy. It's almost a football team. You're missing two players yeah. from your football team. Too too much. Too much, not too more than. Yeah. So we have been working quite a lot on this uh, thriving life for you. And uh, we did the course. Uh, it's almost been three years now since we did the me time course. Time flies. Time, time does really fly, flies. definitely. Yeah. What do you think that kind of are your most important things that helps you have like a balanced and a thriving life for yourself? Right. Of course, at the beginning for me is the family. Second thing is staying active mm -hmm. because staying active is keeping my sanity a little bit. Yeah. And of course, because I have boys, the house is already like at this level of movement Yeah. and I need to keep up with them. Definitely. Doing that, that course, to be honest, like was an eye opener. I'm going to do a quick pause here just to shamelessly advertise this little mini course that Salim mentioned on his values. So this mini course is available on my website. You can enter it straight away today. All you have to do is join the link or uh, click the link in bio and sign up with your email address and you will get access to the course straight away. This is a seven day course with 30 minute guided journaling writing every day for seven days that's going to help you align your life with your values and beyond make sure to check it out if you're interested i had certain values mm -hmm. but i had certain goals mm -hmm. and it guided me to align them together because yeah certain goals doesn't align with my values so they were they were here and now they are here 
not that further down the list. Can you share with us some example of what kind of goals and values that didn't align for you? Right. So family is one of my values. Fitness is one of my goals, let's say. Yeah. So to combine those is to go, for example, hiking with my family. Yeah, got you. So that was things that align values with my goal. Mm -hmm. My health is important important value for me. So uh, eating right, sleeping at the right time was a goal to achieve that kind yeah. of a value. Am I, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Yeah, but this no, is, I completely this understand. Is, this is one of the things. Mm -hmm. Friend, friendship mm -hmm. is important to me. And uh, being able to do fun, active stuff with mm -hmm. my friends Yep. It's two things in one. So I'm doing my exercise and I'm socializing too. With the friends at the same time. So you took a lot of your different things that you liked doing and you kind of combined them to kind of uh, create some more time in your day. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about your value of family. How, how do you kind of honor it? What do you do to kind of make sure that you're keeping the, the family value? Right. So if we go back in 2013, mm -hmm or let's say 2012, when I first got married, my time was more spent on me, mm -hmm. not on the family. Yep. Uh, in 2014, I, uh, I joined CrossFit, and I found out they can do the morning, mm -hmm. the early morning class. So when I calculated, I really want to be active, but I also want to spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. So I started exercising early in the morning when they are asleep, mm -hmm. so I can spend the rest of the day with them. With them, yeah. So you're kind of trying to honor everything without it having to be competing. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So not co like there is some compromise, of course, like because I have to sleep early. Mm -hmm. But at least when the afternoon I come back from work, mm -hmm. I don't need to just chop chop. Let's get change. Let's go to the gym. Yeah. Because that's that's the time uh, the boy is coming from school mm -hmm. and they would like to spend time with their father. Yeah. And I would like to spend time with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be driving 20 minutes to the gym mm -hmm. and then spending one hour there and driving 20 minutes back, that's mm -hmm. almost two hours gone yep. of my day. And kids will be sleeping, wife will be tired. Mm. You're not spending time with anyone. Yeah. So go hit it early in the morning when everybody is asleep. Yeah. Then maybe have a power nap of 20 minutes. Then you're still there. You still can do something yep. with your family. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, readily available for homework and all the other bits that need the uh, yep. doing in the afternoon. Yep. No, yep. that's amazing. What besides from your family, fitness and health are kind of the main values that guide you? Do you have any other values that you find important? As I was saying, friendship, mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. One of the more, most things, to be honest, inner peace. Yeah. Like... I just want to be in peace. So like if I manage to put everything in the right, I don't think I'm using the right word. I would say stress free, which is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's like somehow reduce the stress. Yeah. So if you get things done, you won't be stressed much. Mm-hmm. So one of my values is like try to be stress-free, less angry. Yeah. And how do you achieve that? I'm really curious. This is like, I'm like, okay, I need to learn a little bit more there. <laughs> to be honest, whatever is in my hand, mm -hmm. I have to take an action at that moment. Yep. If it's not in my hand, then I will leave it one until when it's come to my hand. Otherwise, I just like it's not in my hand. I can't do anything. So control the controllables and, and yeah. keep your focus on what you can actually do. Yes. How do you think that your values are different from, for say, uh, people around you, your friends, or or just the the general population? I can only c uh, compare it to the people I know. Mm, so, of course. Like you would think, like for example, one person his value would be like his impressing other people, mm. while for me. I have my own family. I don't need to impress anyone. Mm -mm. So I, th I think this is one thing. Time for them 
me me first me is important to be me first but also as a father yeah. i also need to give time for for my family mm-hmm. i know some of my friends are like no themselves first yeah so could be neglected other side i think this is how am i somehow different yeah. i would sacrifice my late staying out in order for me to work out in the morning yeah. because i want to spend time with my family yeah. while some other people were like, no, I, w- I would rather to spend my time by myself. Mm-hmm. Is that something that changed uh, for you? That you kind of could say, no, this, this, this is important for me and kind of rank it in the hierarchy? 100%. Mm-hmm. In, in the course I had, mm-hmm. it just showed me like, for argument's sake, let's say, I was exercising and was brutal about it because mm-hmm. I want six packs. Yeah. But when I look at it, it's first of all not sustainable. Second of all, it's like for who? Yeah, as always, that's a good question to ask. <laughs> for for who? My wife don't like it. <laughs> no offense to anyone who has six packs. No, no. <laughs> but but like, I have to be so strict that I mm. cannot enjoy time with my family Mm -hmm. because I want that six packs but for what and for who yeah so it was here in my targets and in my goals once upon a time yeah yeah but like let's say when I was single let's say Mm -hmm. I want to impress some some yeah exterior people but like now I need to be in a good shape everybody wants to be in a good shape yeah but I don't need to be in the in the extreme no so it it literally went down from here, all the way here. further down the list. I need to be healthy. I need to be able to carry my son mm-hmm. and go 800 steps in Thailand mm-hmm. without getting out of breath. Mm-hmm. So that's more important. Yeah, this is more important for me than just having the right size of biceps to mm-hmm. go on a good t shirt and impress strangers. Strangers. It's always good to interpret strangers, but that, that's definitely a really good example of how values change over time. And whereas a six pack can be a good hunting tool if you're uh, trying to find yourself a partner, then maybe it's not as functional when you have uh, five kids to run after and uh, yeah, want to do an active holiday. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you do when you face challenges in life? Are you currently facing any challenges? Oh, plenty. Plenty? plenty. Plenty. So I, I am building a, a new house for my mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are living in a rental. I have lots of projects in work. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, my dad had a stroke. So I had to help my brothers and my father to get him back into his health. Yeah. So one thing at a time. So like the house... Mm-hmm. For example, I would say, house, what stage is this? Does it need me? Mm-hmm. For example, at that period, nothing I can do in person, maybe on the phone, maybe just to follow up, but I need to focus on my father. In mm-hmm. uh, the same time, I have kids in school, which my wife is not speaking Arabic, so the Arabic lessons I need to help with. Mm-hmm. So that's that's something I need to focus and I need to designate time for it. Yep. So, I hear you say that you have different challenges in different categories. And, and I, since I know you personally, I know you have quite a lot of things going on. But are you saying that when you face challenges in life, you kind of look at each as a project manager and say, Where, what do I need to do? What can I get someone else to help me doing? Are you... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for example, let's say my father is, is in the hospital. And... I have my siblings, so let's say, can I do the kids' homework and my brother go do the doctor meeting? Mm-hmm. So I would try to see who is my, who is available, who can help me to take one pressure off of me at that time. So you both delegate and then say where is your kind of expertise and uh, like strengths needed, and you step in there, like with the Arabic homework for the school boys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 
Um, is that the only life hack that you use? Or do you have any more life hacks that you deliberately apply when you're facing challenges? Can't, to be honest, I can't think of something at the moment. No? Not, not really. To be, I, can, I cannot... I no, don't have that's fine. <laughs> so, so sometimes you're like, yeah, yeah, I have a life hack. It's to, uh, I don't know, oh, have your coffee things with you in the car at all times. <laughs> 100%. That would maybe be one of your life hacks. Amazing. What are the main strategies that you use when you are kind of making tough decisions? So something comes up, it's kind of splitting you in terms of your values. You have to pick either this or that. What do you do? How do you make those tough decisions in life? The, to be honest, it's very simple. My dad mm -hmm. taught me that. Mm -hmm. The least loss. Mm -hmm. Choose the least loss. So, but I can't, I can't find an example in my head. But for example, if I have to, let's say I have to teach the, the, the boys for it, for an exam mm -hmm. and I have, um, let's say a competition tomorrow. Yep. I'd rather to, like, I would put my, my kids first. Mm -hmm. And I would apologize from the competition. Yeah. So, like, yes, I missed the competition, but my child won't fail the the exam. Exam. Yeah, got you. So it's kind of like ranking it on a list of like importance or you know future losses. Yes. Picking the one that has the least loss. Yeah. Are you always this logi uh, like uh, logical thinking when you come to um, decisions? So, so, suppose, suppose, suppose to. Suppose unless, to, yeah. Unless I'm cornered and I have to defend myself, then yeah. that's, 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 that's right. a black. <laughs> what would be any situations where the emotions would get the best of you? Do you have anything on the top of your mind? Oh, if, if someone like uh, was physical with, with any of my friends, family or anybody, yep. I would black out. I would do something stupid. Have some uh, other less logical decisions making there. Yes, very, possibly. very least, lo very least logical thing. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen too often. Nah. <laughs> People get physical with the <laughs> in uh, their conflicts. What is something that you have done in your life that you are particularly proud of? Oh, to be honest, mm -hmm. like I'm proud of being a father. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of my work because I can see the impact I have on people. Mm -hmm. It just gives me satisfaction. Okay, so, so name for me some projects that you've been working on with work where you can actually well, see that. For example, there was a link between uh, a road, an important road in UAE, which is 611, mm -hmm. and a neighborhood. Yep. And that link wasn't there. There was like a, just a sun area which people use their four by four to mm -hmm. go there. The project came and we had to do the link, the actual connection. Yep. connection. Mm -hmm. And I can't see how people are happy on the social media. I don't I don't need to be named no, no. to get the credit. But mm -hmm. like just to see how it just changed people's life and make it easier mm -hmm. is very, very, very satisfying. Mm -hmm. And the project you you're trying to make me talk about, which is the cycle. <laughs> yeah. I made the cycle track in, uh, I'm the project manager from the RTA yep. because we are like many authorities, so I don't discredit anyone else. No, no. We did uh, 24 kilometers first cycle track in Sharjah, mm -hmm. which is in a spectacular location with beautiful views. Mm -hmm. So I'm really proud of that. Yep, I think it should be. So that's a designated uh, cycle track where only bikes can go and they're not in risk of uh, being hit by any cars or anything like that. Uh, it's debatable. <laughs> debatable. <laughs> because, <Some can. laughs> because it's in the middle of the desert, so I cannot promise that there is no... Cars, okay. Some Fair. reckless person will use yep. this car to cross. No. But like in general, we use all the measurements to yep. put the crossings, the speed humps, these mm -hmm. things. But of course, you always have those two or crazy people. people. We can't avoid the accidents. Yeah, it, is, it is designated. Mm -hmm. It is 24 kilometer one way. So if you go and come back, it's 48. Mm -hmm. It is in a really nice terrain. Mm -hmm. 
So you will see half trees, which is the symbol of the, the trees in the UAE. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the uphill, downhill. You will see the the, wa the wadi next mm -hmm. to you, the mountain on your left. It's like it's peaceful to ride in it and like enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's a very scenic route. I'm, I can't wait. I actually have to go right there ASAP. Maybe we should uh, schedule that at the end of this sure, call sure. when we're going to go visit the friendship, cycling. And nature at the same time yeah, ties yeah. in all the values. Tell me, what is the biggest motivation you for, for you to succeed in life? You mentioned it's not for the fame, it's not for the name drops and the credit, but what do you think is your biggest motivation? Is um my biggest motivation is like to, I don't want to say serve. Mm -hmm. I would say serve. Like so, when I serve and people are like, I have an impact on people. Mm -hmm. That that's that's the thing that drives me as yep. like in my career. Yep. But as in my life, my, my family, yep. my kids, my wife. These are my biggest motivation. Mm -hmm. To see them thriving mm -hmm. is I'm thriving. Yep. If they are success, that means I'm successful. Yep. So when the kids are doing well in school and getting good grades and have good friendships, then you're like... Yeah, when I see, when I see my son confident, mm -hmm. strong personality, and also doing well in school, mm -hmm. and people like praise him, it just makes me feel... I want to give more also. Yeah. Amazing. That's so good. What do you consider the best part of your day? And why is that the best part of your day? Early morning. Early morning. Early morning. Because no one can bother me. No. Everybody is asleep. I'm mm -hmm. awake, making mm -hmm. my coffee, yep. doing my own thing, whether it's walking, whether it's just like sitting or whatever. Mm -hmm. But early morning. Mm -hmm. How early is early morning for you? Like sunrise. Yep, because that's a really big span in the UAE. <laughs> but yes, I'm an early riser, so uh, I, I I love it. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, people who see this video or podcast, I have a coach mm -hmm. who would tell you come to Al Qadra at five thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> this coach hasn't been up uh, for Kutra at 5.30 in the morning for a long time. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I know, I know. Life, life, life have, have sometimes, uh, <laughs> uh, what do you call it, rules to imply on us. But yep. to be honest, best time of my, of my day is early in the morning. Yeah, amazing. And what do you do these early mornings? I hear you say coffee. Coffee is a must, of course. Yeah. I'm a coffee snob, and you know that. Yeah. I would have coffee mm -hmm. if it's an... If it's an, a relaxing day uh, and nice weather, I would sit outside, mm -hmm. listen to the birds. If it's uh, the normal weekdays, I would be working out. Mm -hmm. Depends on what's on my schedule. I would be done, get ready, take the boys to to school. If it's their holiday, we would mm -hmm. go do some activity, whether it's hiking or it's uh, even going to the park. Yep. When you go early in the morning, it's empty. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, this is true. So, so yeah. Taking advantage of the uh, facilities before everyone else wakes up. Yep. Who is your role model or do you have one? Role model. Mm -hmm. I have more than one. More than more one. Than one. Bring them all. So, uh, as a Muslim, my main role model is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then my father. Yep. Uh, and uh, our rulers. Mm-hmm. Any one particular are, of them that inspires you? My, our rulers? All hmm? of them. All, all of them? them. I, 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 I cannot specify one. Each no. one have its own own way of unique. Yeah. But like as, as, as the one closer person is my father. Yeah. And what is it particularly about your father that uh, makes you look up to him? What is it that you want to resemble? His patience, his success. He he raised me, mm -hmm. and he was so patient. I'm a tough, I'm a difficult son. I'm 100. percent I know that. I'm difficult one. <laughs> I would love to have like 0 0.01 of his patience. Yeah. And he is also 
same thing. He 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 put those values in me. Like try to help people, and you will get satisfaction, mm-hmm. regardless who it is. It doesn't need to be someone from UAE. It doesn't need to be someone from my religion. Just help people, help humanity. Mm-hmm. If you help them, you serve, you will get th- this kind of satisfaction. Mm-hmm. He always makes this um, comparison between me and one of my cousins who yeah. is only 38. Mm-hmm. And he, like, his goal was to get re- to, to retire. And when he retired, he's doing nothing. Yep. So he's like, don't be like this person. Serve the people, serve your country until you have you have enough. Yeah. Because even if you if you retire, if you can help people, just help people. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm uh, like many. I can't. If I keep talking about my father, I wouldn't finish. So no. this is the general. <laughs> He definitely sounds like a very inspirational person and a very motivating one as well. Um, yeah, he always, he always motivates us. He always gives us like stories. He's the one put me like since, sorry, I'm jumping a little bit off the topic. Like, Go for it. He's the one, he's not athletic, mm-hmm. but he put me in karate in grade one. Mm. He put me in taekwondo until I finished grade 12 and I joined, he even pushed me, not pushed me, I was like, motivate me to go to the national team. Mm-hmm. I I was in the national team. I had a black belt taekwondo when I was mm-hmm. like in grade 12. Then when I joined the college, he was like, he did not pressure me to go into a certain field. There was yeah. a one person who was inspiring me to be an engineer, mm-hmm. which is my auntie's husband. Mm-hmm. But, but like my father was the always motivator. Of course, my mother is always there. I'm yeah. not going to deny my mother. Her. No, <laughs> and her influence. But... But like my father was always the one I go back because he was like a, a senior manager in, in Dubai custom. Mm-hmm. And he have this, I don't know how to say it, like you, you want to go back to him for, for an advice. Yeah. So like he always say, like, uh, be active, be productive, mm-hmm. help people. If you have somebody else need and you can't give, just give. Yeah. You don't need to wait. There is a saying, I don't know how to say it. I will try to say it in Arabic and then translate it. Yeah, uh, it's in Arabic, which means make good and throw it in the sea. You yeah. don't need payback. Yeah. You it's like uh, one day it will come back. It's like karma. So you, you yes. basically just so want to like give the good one things. Day, one day you did good for someone, one day it will come back. You don't need instantly no. a payback no. or a favor back, but like one day you will get something back. Yeah. And to be honest, I've seen it in my life plenty of times. Mm-hmm. Got you, got you. What, if anything, would you like to be remembered for? Being the happy person who come to the room and bring joy. That is a really good one. If you were to make any changes, what would you change and why? I would want to be financially free and Mm -hmm. so I'm not an employee so I can spend more time Mm -hmm. with my wife and my kids and give them everything they want. Yep. Without without trying to think what's in my bank account. Yes. So a little bit more distance between the zeros in the bank account and uh, what you actually make of decisions every day to give you a little bit more buffer and freedom. Yep. That is a really good, uh, big dream. Yeah. Maybe something that uh, can be worked towards. One day, one day. This is one of the goals. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you feel like we have not covered when it comes to kind of uh, your lifestyle and your values and how they lead you? I think I neglected one person. Yeah? I know she will kill me. No, 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 no. Which is, which is my wife. Yeah. One of the things that when you said who inspired you, I totally forgot how did she inspire me. Mm-hmm. She started from scratch with with her group and mm-hmm. she is big now. Mm-hmm. And I think because of her now, one of the goals, as I was saying, I'm free financially. Mm-hmm. I think it's achievable because I can see she don't have a, a, a like 
an employee job or an mm-hmm. actual job, but she's thriving. Yep. So I think I think it's manageable. Mm-hmm. And I'm proud of her, of course, because she 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 is like successful now. Mm-hmm. So um she's inspiring me to push harder on doing something for myself yep. rather than the job only. Yeah. To also support her and the fa- and the family. Yeah. So some side hustles coming up for you? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll I was going to say, we'll you can shamelessly plug uh, her group in here as well if you want to. Well, uh, the group is called Real Moms of Dubai. Yep. Uh, I think the Instagram, I'm not sure to be honest. I think the Instagram is You can send it to me. Same. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Don't worry. You can, just send it to yeah. me. That's it. This is yeah. this is what I can think of. Mm-hmm. I think in like uh, are we wrapping up? Yeah. Yeah. So I think each person. I'm not. I'm not uh, downgrading the person who is looking for his six months. No. I'm not looking. I'm not down. I'm not looking down to the one who prioritized himself mm-hmm. before his family. This is your choice. Mm-hmm. This is what you want. You mm-hmm. know that this is best for you. Maybe uh, this situation is suitable for your family or for your house or for yourself. Yep. But in the end, look who's around you and who's also affected by your decision. This is what I would say. Mm-hmm. Because I think as human, we need companions. We need family. We need, we need, we need somebody around us. So, social beings. Yes. So... I would say don't lose people around you for materials. Yeah. So stay That's focused it. on what is important to you and the people yeah. that are in your surroundings. That's it. Absolutely. I think it's a really good life advice from uh, Mr. Salim. Mr. Mr. Old but not old. Mr. Old but not old. I'll just thank you for today for this chat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, yeah, until next time. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you so much. If you made it this far, I want to ask you for a favor to help us help this podcast grow. So if you enjoyed this episode, if you got some value out of hearing about this busy family father who is trying to keep all boats afloat at the same time and managing to do so pretty well at the moment, then I would love if you could share this episode on your socials Tag me, tag Salim, and let us know what you thought. Until next time, have a great one.